Hey everybody, it's A Dog's Life with Angela Ardolino, and I'm joined today by Rachel Augusta, who I honestly cannot remember how I found you. I just remember finding you, and I loved what you wrote. I know it was probably on social media, and then I went down a rabbit hole and ended up on your website where I fell madly in love with you. And so, yeah, I have no idea um, what... Like usually I'll make a little outline going, okay, I have to talk to them about this, this, and this. You, I feel like we could just get on a podcast and start talking because first of all, your philosophy, I love this and um, I might uh, just adapt, take it, take it from, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but her Everything philosophy- yeah. Say hi to everyone first. Say hi. Hello. And yes, everything's borrowed. You know, nothing at this point is a, a super original anymore. So borrow it. I love <laughs> yeah, it. I borrowed so, it. Yeah. Her philosophy is believe the diagnosis, don't believe the prognosis. And that is so true. I feel like so many of us pet parents, um, you know, our dogs get sick, we go to the vet and we get bad news and we get told, you know, this is what it is. And you've got two weeks to live. And you're like, what the, f how the, h no, no. And it's, what's really bad is when I really think about how many times I have been told things that are just completely not true. Yeah. And now when it comes to animals, I'm sorry. Unless you have been with animals as long as I have, I don't believe anyone but myself now. I trust my gut. I've had wonderful vet, veterinarians, holistic veterinarians, of course, tell me you are, you are right. You know what you're doing. Trust yourself because it is so hard to have that conventional vet who is telling you, if you don't have, if you don't get this chemotherapy, if you don't remove that leg, I have a, by the way, a Doberman with osteosarcoma who I'm treating with cannabis, mushrooms, and diet. And um, uh, yeah, she's supposed to be dead already. Yeah. And she's That's not. A common story. Yeah. So I feel like you're like me where yeah. you've become this person where you've helped so many people, you know, learn outside what, what there is available outside of convention because conventional vets do not get taught about uh, diet or nutrition they don't get taught about uh, essential oils. They don't get taught about um, cannabis. There's chiropractic, all of these wonderful modalities that save lives on a regular basis. So, right. Yeah. I'd love to chime in here because I mean, two main things. First of all, let me just say, I love vets and I love Western medicine. And if you have broken legs or a serious cut, a wound where you need surgery, this is not time for essential oils. This is time for your vet. This is time for your hospital. Like we so grateful that they're there. Right. You know, like they've saved so many lives, but the issue is that we have somehow put ourselves into a position of believing that they are the end all be all that they're the only thing out there. And that creates a lot of desperation because they're not, and they've never claimed to be. Like you said, they're not nutritionists. They've, vets, ne vets have never claimed to be nutritionists. So the fact that people go to them for nutritional advice, it's like, why would you do that? That would be like going to your grocery store clerk for nutritional advice. It's not their job. And the other thing I'll say in relation to this is that I've studied with cancer researchers and one of them said, Rachel, when we scratch our hand, dead skin cells fall off and our body knows to make new skin cells and our body knows when to stop making new skin cells, but no biologist can answer how. Just remember that's where we're at with Western medicine. And I've always, that's, it's always he, like right here, it's stuck right here whenever I'm talking to people because when they come to me and say, this is what my vet said, this is the prognosis, I have two days, my dog has two days to live, I have to do these things. I'm like, we don't even know how our body regenerates new cell, <laughs> like how our body knows when to start and stop regenerating new cell growth. How could we ever possibly predict 
um, when someone's going to die. Now, sometimes they give really great guesstimates and it's spot on, like your dog has six months and you know what? Sometimes it really is just six months, Mm -hmm. but I have seen hundreds, hundreds of animals that come to me where, you know, the human, their guardian says they have two days and the animal's still alive years later, thriving, not just alive, thriving because we just needed to change a few things. It's, it's amazing. And of course, you know, people know who listen to my show that I also am a lover of vets, especially an integrative, alternative, holistic vet. We also have to remember when we have an issue, we go to a doctor. Yep. Um, well, get some the diagnosis. Us, some of us don't, right? We get the diagnosis and then they send us to a specialist. Yes. That doesn't exist so much in the veterinary world. So for it us- doesn't. So for us to think that this person is supposed to know everything about everything and have the time to pay off that huge student debt, pay the bills, learn, uh, pay for additional classes to learn more, we can't. So you have to be your best health advocate and your pet's um, health advocate. 100%. And everything, every time somebody says to me, my doctor or my vet said, there's nothing more that can be done. I re like I clarify, no, there's nothing more that they could do. Right. And they're speaking their truth. And think thank goodness they're speaking their truth. And they're not taking you down a thirty thousand dollar rabbit hole that leads to nowhere and wastes a bunch of time. Amen. They're telling you that they can't help you any further. And, and I've that even had mean it's the end of the road. Right. And I've even had those vets refer them to me, the crazy yep. cannabis witch lady who's Same. doing some stuff. So try her. Problem yeah. is, and I'm sure this happens to you, it is so sad at um, CBD Dog Health. The only time we get rid returns is when they've ordered the product and the dog is passed before it got there in three or four days um which you know people are turning i know it's changing it's gonna get it's gonna that's gonna stop happening because people are going to start realizing that nothing is working that my vet is doing they walk into the vet demanding an answer so they hand them an antibiotic or another prescription drug oh my gosh you would have been so happy my podcast earlier today was with Uh, Dr. Paul Rowan. He's a holistic vet for the past 23 years, and he has not uh, prescribed a drug for 23 years. Wow. That's, that's massive. And, and actually I was just having a conversation with um, somebody that works in a biology department for humans. And what we were talking about was how antibiotics are no longer working. They're not going to be working for humans, for animals. And then what, where like, you can't, you, you have to, you know, we were talking about humans, but of course this translates over to animals is the knee surgery worth it because the infection that they get with the antibiotic that might not heal it is it could kill them. Wow. And so w- weighing out, what do we do? Do I just deal with the fact that I need a knee surgery and I can't do it because antibiotics are no longer working because we've been pumped. So full of them, animals that people eat are pumped full of you know, antibiotics, which if you're eating animals, then you're getting all of it. It's, it's, the cycle is huge. And what I said was, yeah, people are going to have to start looking to different modalities, not using antibiotics, you know, if you don't, cause they're prescribed so quickly. Right. And, For anything. You know, and Well, imagine you're, they come in, I get it. I see both sides. I get it. They walk in, their dog's got a horrible cough. They can't figure out what it is. Or they do know it's poor diet to over vaccination, whatever. And what else are they supposed to do? And they're going, stop it. How do I stop it? Right. And they give them something that stops it. Well, right. when they do give you that thing that stops it, you're suppressing their immune system and their ability to heal themselves. And, and I don't down, know about yeah, you. Their liver and their kidneys and causing a lot exactly. of issues. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know about you, but all I do is support the immune system same and the that's animal's what, yeah. ability to heal itself yeah that's what i say to so many people you know people are always like what what do you but what do you do like if you're not a vet what are you doing and you know really it's like well i'm getting the brain and the body to start working with one another instead of against each other and what that is is building up the immune system so that you know you've got a nice symbiotic relationship between the two and one thing i tell my clients is you know, you can't heal if you're in pain. 
You just can't. That's why when you go to the doctor with a broken arm, they ask you what your pain level is. They're not asking because they feel bad for you. And they're not prescribing Percocet because they're like, oh, that sucks here. They're right. prescribing it because you can't heal if you're in pain. And it doesn't matter if it's a broken arm or if it's cancer. And, you know, cancer is painful. And that's why, you know, so many of my clients are like, oh, no, my dog has, do you think they're in pain? Yeah, they're in pain. It's cancer amazing. is painful. That's how most people know they end up having cancer. Most humans is because they had such an excruciating pain that that's what they went and like went to a doctor for was the pain. Right. And right. so what you have to do is get the brain to have a disco party. You know, you need the brain to be like, to stop sending the messages to your body. That's like, you need to look at this. There is something seriously wrong. And if you can get the brain to relax and take a break, which happens with CBD oils, which what? is why I'm a massive fan, like, you know, give the brain a disco party through CBD oils, then the muscles relax. And when the muscles relax, relax, the blood becomes oxygenated oxygenated, which triggers the whole physiological relaxation response that leads to new cell growth. And you, it doesn't matter if you're on chemo or if you're not on chemo, you need new cell growth. You have to have it, which yep. is why I'm like, I love CBD. And when people, you know, there's so many questions like, well, does it interfere with Western medicine? No. Does it break down Matter your fact, organs? It complements it a lot of times. It time. complements it. No, it complements everything. And you're not going to overdose on it. You're not going to form an addiction to it, but it is going to create the disco party in the brain that's going to trigger the physiological relaxation response that's going to lead to new cell growth. So you need it. And um, I love your title. You are a holistic. Oh my gosh, I already forgot it. Say it, tell me. Holistic practitioner what did you call it yourself yeah I, yeah a holistic practitioner that works with animals just who are sick with cancer diseases injuries old age illnesses yeah right. so imagine that um just like vets can only have so much and be taught so much in that span of time and become specialist people like you and i have i'm i am a pet cannabis expert i have used cannabis, CBD, THC in every single form on just about every animal that I can think of. Maybe not a fish. I'll have to get some water soluble, Ooh, but I'm sure yeah. it would work. Drop her into the water. <laughs> right. they're, they're like all of a sudden you'll know yeah. it's working when they're like doing the backstroke. Right. <laughs> they're like, I feel good. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, we um you know now, I'm pretty sure your story was like mine, where you got an animal that was sick and was given a um, prognosis that was not, you didn't accept. And you're like, yeah, nope. Is that kind yeah. of how it started? Yeah, it's exactly how it started. I, people ask me all the time, like, how did you know that you, how did you know you wanted to work with animals? And it's like, well, this was never my plan. And, you know, I got into it because at the time I realized it was me or it was nobody. And my kitty who was, was, is, you know, on the other side, my soul companion. Um, so you were kind of lucky in a strange way, because at least you didn't get the vet who tried another drug or another treatment or more x-rays or an ultrasound or put them under for, you know, for some sort of exploratory surgery. I remember that happening with my dog. They're like, well, we, we can't see anything wrong. So we're going to have to open her up. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's put her under when she's on death's door. They turn it. Well, and I, I see vets do this and I see human guardians do this. And I really talk people out of it is don't turn your animal into a science project. Um, they, it's too stressful. It will not help them. And you will end up uh, spending everything you have and go into debt, which will cause such major stress in you, it will actually cause their cancer to grow. So um, yeah, I was lucky in a weird way that I had a vet that was so had so little bedside manners that she sent the hair back up on the hair up on the back of my neck. Like, she, you know, she's old, she's gonna die. But you and, know what, guys, pay attention to that. Yeah, if you don't have a vet that you can go, hey, have you how, how, what do you think about CBD? Yeah. Or they talk to you that way or your hair stands up on the back of your neck. You have a bad feeling. Leave. Bad feeling. Yes. You, we now live in a time where you can find your favorite vet yep. and you can call them up on the phone and do a zoom meeting with them. 
do that instead. So much has changed, honestly, since I've been in this business. But at the time, you know, that's how I ended up working with animals was because I was like, I have to be the advocate. And, and now when people come to me, they're like, wow, I'm so grateful you're giving me this information. I'm like, because this was all the stuff that I needed and wanted that was not out there. Nope. And I, I am grateful that I had a vet who had such a, you know, chilling demeanor because otherwise I would have listened to her implicitly because I was lost. Don't run to your vet if you're lost about anything. You've got to do your own homework. Um, you know, gosh, how many years ago now? Oh, Odie. When, when my Odie became a, he's my solo dog. When he became an old man, when he was nine years old, he started kicking his leg out. He stopped going up the steps, you know, all kinds of things. And I take him to my vet and she practices East West. And she said, um, immediately she says to me, it's a brain tumor without checking anything. And I'm like, how do you just spit that out? Mm. You know? And I'm like, of course I believe her. Obviously everything that she's seeing him do or whatever. And I've told her must in her experience equal brain tumor. And then she told me it was degenerative myelopathy. Mm. Then she told me it was lumbar something. So every time she told me something, I just kept don't doing the, huh? What? No. And every time I, she'd say something, I would research it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I uh, made an acupuncture appointment with her. And this is where I feel like I got, got lucky, aggravated, but lucky is she, uh, I made her take x-rays, everything we could. And I said, and I want to do acupuncture. She's like, let me do, let me look at the x-rays and then come back next week. Let me look at all of this and come back next week. And I'll do an adjustment according to what and I'm like, yes, that makes sense. I came back and she, um, she's like, oh, she had also told me about a chiropractor. So I did the research, came back. I said, hey, this chiropractor, um, he referred me to this person and this person. And she's like, you can't do chiropractic without x-rays. I'm like, you did x-rays. No, I didn't. She starts arguing with me about whether I did x-rays. So that was my see you later. <laughs> yeah, like you're and not even important. looking at notes. You're not even looking at your own notes. So I'm going to get, so this is, I want people to understand just because it's a holistic vet, you still need to do your homework. If you still don't have that, that good feeling or understand or feel like that someone is your, um, also your pet's best advocate and working for you, then you need to move on because it's not going to happen. Totally. And, and, you know, and on it, so many, I tell so many people this, you have to trust your gut. That is your guiding light. You know, it's like, I can't tell you how many times I've taken my car into a car shop and I'm like, there's something wrong. And they're like, everything's great. I'm like, no, I know there is. I know my car. I can hear something. Dig deeper, dig deeper. I mean, we can all relate to this. Like we've all been in, we all know when there's something wrong with our car. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, you know if there's something wrong with your animal and if they're taking, if you really tune into yourself, you can, even if you don't know the answer, you're like, I'm not psychic enough to know, you know, when something doesn't feel right, we all have that ability. (laughs) Otherwise we'd all be dead. Like we were born with it. I I mean, really everyone think about it. When has your gut been wrong? Never. Never. So your gut always never got cut trust your gut. And if you are in, this is the thing though, I get it when you're scared and you're freaking out because your best friend is sick and dying. I get it. So you're like, I'm too ungrounded. I can't tune in. I don't have the ability. That is why you go and get a second opinion. That is why you go and talk to unbiased parties like like Angela or myself who are like, actually, actually, I don't mean to interrupt you. I want to back that up a minute. So when you're feeling that way about your animal's diagnosis and you think your animal is not feeling well, to me, down to the core of everything is that we do not want them to suffer. Right. So guess what? Take a full dropper for yourself so that you can calm down. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. And then give some to your dog because this is that one thing that you're going to give them that's only going to help them. It's going to remove the anxiety. It's going to remove the pain and it's helping support their immune system, which helps get them better or fight off disease. Totally. And you so know, and it's like, yeah, huh, yeah I give God. a talk on this too. You know, the talk that I, I give on this is that animals cancer, if we're talking specifically about cancer, I mean, there's a lot of other things. There could be injuries, all sorts of stuff, but they've been able to prove that cancer grows, that cancer in our animals grow based on our stress levels over their illness. Yep. So if, you know, that's when people come to me, they're freaking out, they're crying. I'm like, yep, feel it, feel all of it. You need to. And then go jump into some serious self-care, which would, yes, be CBD, baths, like really tuning into yourself because you have to be grounded for them. You're their advocate. You have to be the one, you know, I always think of actually, so my little brother was hit by a car when he was like seven, eight. Oh my gosh. And my mom's response was to get down on her knees and start praying. And I remember as a child being like, you're not going to help him. He's out on the ground right now. And mm-hmm. she couldn't make it to him because she kept passing out. So she would run and pass out, run and pass out, run and pass out. And as a child, I remember being like, if I'm ever dying in a ditch somewhere, I do not want my mom to be the person who finds me because she doesn't have the capability to stay grounded in her body to help someone else, which is what we have to do for our animals. So even when you're getting a diagnosis and like, if anybody has had an animal who's sick, you know, this feeling I'm about to describe you're waiting for them to say the worst to you. You can feel your like anxiety in your stomach, your heart's dead, like your heart's in your throat. Like you can't feel like you can't breathe. These are your best friends. This is the time to start slow breathing, slow breathing, and even just focus on your breath right now. Everything like Instead, we're like, I'm trying to get all the information. That information is probably not going to stay with you anyway. You're probably going to have to call the vet back and be like, can you tell me again what you just said to me? Mm -hmm. This is your time to just, I need to get into my body. I need to breathe. I need to go get a second opinion. I need to get on the phone with an unbiased party who's highly educated in how to help animals who can help me brainstorm my game plan. And then when you do come up with that game plan, do it when you are in a nice calm and then you want to write it down because you're yeah. going to second guess yourself a million times. Yeah. Like I do it exactly on my, every you know, day. Yeah. I have. So in my cancer course, I have worksheets that people download, awesome. write out. What is your goal? I love write it. Write it out. What is it today? What, what do you want? Because based on your goals, your game plan is different. If your if your goal is, I know that they're dying. I know I got to this too late. I know that we're going into hospice care that's going to be a far different, you're going to have different goals and do be doing different things than somebody who's like, I'm in it to win it. And we're going to be on Oprah. So like that's, those are two different conversations. Right. And there's wonderful, beautiful things you can do for both of those goals, but they're very different goals. And it just helps keep you grounded and centered. Awesome. They get the diagnosis. What is your suggestion on the first thing for them to do? Yeah. So with the diagnosis, my first suggestion is, well, depending on what it is, if it's something, let's say it's cancer, go get a second opinion from a vet, like go get another opinion, you know, just get really clear on that. We see this happen with humans. So many times you get a cancer diagnosis, then you go to another doctor and they're like, it's not cancer. You have IBS. Um, And so just go and get a second or a third opinion. That's always especially when you're like, this is big. I have to create a game plan. So it's interesting on my, on um, Nina's, it's osteosarcoma in the wrist. So the moment that I saw that pop up, I knew it. And I went online and saw one picture after another. So I already knew what it was. So I just went, of yeah, course, now so all I have to do is now is call Dr. Zach. So I just went to get the x-rays done and um, make sure it hadn't spread. And then we came up with our treatment plan. Right. But and sometimes you know, you know, and sometimes you're right. like, I don't need a second opinion. This is really obvious. It's kind of a no brainer. I just needed to see it in writing. Right. But then it's the creating goals. What, what's your game plan? Because if you're going, are we operating? 
are we doing CBD? Are we like, are we doing traditional chemo, chemo? And, are we doing Eastern and Western? Right. Um, and remember people, I immediately, this is before I knew nothing about osteosarcoma as far as me having to, you know, come up with that game plan is that I thought the first thing I would do that I was going to have to do was amputate her leg. Yeah. Because you think, well, the cancer is here on the wrist. I take the leg. I've gotten rid of the cancer. However, that's not how osteosarcoma works. So that's what most, that's what convention tells you to do. Take the leg off, chemo, radiation, everything without ever mentioning that we could do all of these other things and that amputating the leg does not remove the cancer. And how many people think that? And that is you know, your $10,000 and your dog is still dead. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, tortured, you know, right. had to have its yeah, their last days that. have been horrible. Yeah. Right. You know, and that's one of the things that I've really tried. To, so for me, something is that I've tried to really bring into my life is I want to know what th- I need to do before it happens. Like I want to be prepared for the bad before the bad hits, because a lot of times when the bad hits, let's say cancer, you're like, I don't know anything about cancer. I don't know what could trigger it. I don't know what makes it better. I have no idea. And so you're like, gosh, now I'm throwing myself into a crash course and I'm depressed. I'm freaked out. I'm trying to be their advocate. And so, you know, it's like, I want to say, what's the first thing you do when somebody gets cancer? Educate yourself on it. But no, educate yourself on cancer before anybody ever gets sick. Because if you educate yourself on it, chances are you can prevent a lot of it. You know, a lot of cancers come from things that are in your house. You know, it's your toxic, stinky chemicals. It's the scented candles. It's incense. Scented incense. Get it out everything of the house. She, everything she's saying, plug-in. she is right. Get rid get of that. Get it out of the house. Like get you so. Your you, laundry detergent. Laundry to Get cleaner. it out of the house. You know. Floor people, cleaners. Exactly. And people don't understand. Like humans have 10 million neuron receptors in their brain associated with smell. A cat has 80 million and a dog has 400 million. And so, you know, I, I always say to people, we all have been in a big mall. We all know when you're like in Macy's and when you're getting really close to the perfume counter, we all know like, okay, I'm coming up on it. I can feel like the little hairs on my face start to Pringle. Mm -hmm. I start to get a ring headache. Okay. Imagine multiplying that by 40 and putting me in a small closet. That is essentially what we do to our dogs and cats and birds and, you know, animals, bunnies, when we force our Glade plugins on them, our pumpkin scented candles, our vanilla, like get it out of the house. And if you educate yourself on some of that, you don't have to throw yourself in a crash course once something bad happens, because the truth is we are all going to die. And cancer is one of the biggest reasons why our animals are dying. So educate yourself on cancer and how to prevent it now and how to like, well, what would I do if something happened? And, you know, so do that before it hits. But after, once you get the diagnosis, then you're like, I know, I know, I don't have to start at the beginning and educate myself. I know where I can jump in because when our animals get sick, humans love us, but oh my gosh, we wait until things are so bad that you have, you're calling on a miracle and, or they run to the vet immediately for diarrhea. I'm like, Everybody gets diarrhea. Is the dog running around happy and just happened to have some diarrhea? For what God did you days? feed them? A <laughs> bunch of popcorn last night? Yeah. Okay. Now they have diarrhea. But yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, even with ourselves, we wait till things are so bad that it's like, oh, great. Now I really need a, a crisis team, you know? Um, and so the same is true with our animals. Like, don't wait, you know, even when people get a cancer diagnosis, they're like, I'm going to spend some time thinking about it. I'm like, do that, but don't spend a month thinking about it. Spend a couple days thinking about it. And you need to start making action like right now, because it moves quickly. I love that you brought up being uh, preventative because of course, Nina's is uh, osteosarcoma, which is a bone cancer, which is most common in large breed dogs. Yeah. Um, it's a genetic thing. And so I'm like, well, if it's genetic, what if after the one year of age, we start all large breed, especially Dobermans and Rottweilers that get it, the Greyhounds most, get it, yeah. get it, 
give them, yeah. start them on a CBD regimen so that we can see if we can prevent it from happening in the first place. Totally. And that's the same with injuries with big dogs, you know, mm-hmm. like so many dogs come to me with, um, back injuries. And honestly, I didn't know until I started working with animals that so many dogs have back injuries. Oh my God. You know, all of them. All of them. Like I, I met a dog who actually didn't meet the dog. They euthanized the dog. I met the family the dog was chasing a butterfly, like turned their head and, you know, and the vet said, we need to euthanize. What? No. Like, would we euthanize ourselves with a pinched nerve? I've pinched a nerve in my back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so I, it's so sad when I hear that or people come to me and they're like, this is what happened to my dog. My vet said, it's displaced discs and it's going to be $15,000 surgery. What do you think? And I'm like, okay, well, I've pinched a nerve in my back slipping on ice. And you know what? I didn't have, what we know about back surgeries is that you never recover in humans. Humans never recover from back surgeries. You're, you're in chronic pain the rest of your life. And mm-hmm. chances are, you're going to have to have more back surgeries. Let's apply that and say, that's probably true for your animals too. What worked for me with mine? A lot of pain relief. So let's mm-hmm. do that with your dog, you know, put in the pain relief, give the pain relief. And, and you see them like within a week or two up and jumping around and they're fine. I love it. I've had such a good time talking to you today. We have to do this again. I don't know how, maybe on we'll do some Facebook lives or something. Cause I would I, love that. Yeah. I would I love that. This is, this was awesome. And I knew it would be, um, where, can, <laughs> where can people find you? Let's uh, give them your information, your website and how they can get in touch with you if they want to talk to you about their dogs. Yes. So um, my website is my name, rachelagusta.com. And there's a free cancer course on there that people can go through whether their animals have cancer or not to educate themselves on it. And there's worksheets, videos. It's super easy, really quick. I didn't turn it into this hard, horrible thing because nobody needs that right now, especially after 2020 um, (laughs) and 2021. So it's really easy. Um, Yeah, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, like all those places just under my name, they can search me and they'll find me that way. Awesome. I'm so glad I found you. And thank you so much for being on my show today. Keep in touch. Thanks, Angela. Have a good one. You too.